ring modulation is a very out there effect. If you've ever played a ring modulator for two seconds, you know that they specialize in creating weird atonal noise like this. But in this video, I'm going to show you five ways you can use ring modulation to do very practical, usable things. Believe it or not, there are ways to use ring mod that's not just weird for the sake of weird. And in this video, I'm going to show you how. The first pro tip is to take your ring modulator and run it into an overdriven amp or into your dirt pedals. There's a particular way to set a ring modulator where the sound it makes will fuse with the distortion it's going into, and that effect is what we're going for here. In the example I'm gonna show you, I'm using the Strymon Mobius as the ring modulator, but there's really nothing special about this. You could do this with any ring mod pedal. Uh, what you're gonna do is, um, on the frequency shift knob, Whatever the range of the frequency shift is on your ring mod pedal, set it to be a little higher than halfway. And then take the mix and set that to be a little less than halfway. And that way there's still the integrity of your notes are still there, but there's enough ring mod happening that when it hits the distortion, something really unusual and very cool is going to happen. It's going to sort of rewrite what the sound of your distortion is. The next pro tip is if you play one note, it's possible to turn the frequency shift knob on your ring modulator to a place where the noise it's making will actually be consonant with that one single note. So the pro tip here is to do that and then only play octaves of that note. So you got to pick a note that's going to work for the key of the song you're in. But once you get that far, uh, you can play octaves of that note to get a very cool bell effect. And then the bonus pro tip is to run that into a reverb, any reverb. There's a universal sweet spot on every ring modulator, and I'm about to show it to you. You might have noticed that when uh, the frequency shift is very low on a ring mod pedal, the effect just sounds like a tremolo thing. And then if you turn it up, it starts to sound like this weird ring mod thing. <laughs> Universal sweet spot is right in between those two effects, right where the tremolo thing begins to morph into the other weird thing. So the pro tip here is to set your ring modulator in that spot, and then if the pedal has an LFO, uh, use that to move the spot just a little bit so that your signal is going from the tremolo thing into the weirder thing. If you play with that, um, 
you'll still be able to hear the notes of everything you're doing. You won't be fully in the atonal lagoon of it all, but there will be this very cool sort of emotionally complex sound. One thing I always liked about the MF-102 ring modulator from Moog is that one of its outputs was this thing called Carrier Out, which uh, lets you listen to and play the triangle wave oscillator inside this pedal. It sounded like this. Now this pedal is discontinued, but Fairfield Circuitry makes a ring modulator called the Randy's Revenge that does the same thing. You can play the carrier frequency inside this as like this little one knob oscillator. Now, th this is cool for a couple of reasons. The first is when you play an oscillator like this that just has one knob that's continuous frequency, there's no frets, th there's like no such thing as playing in a position. It's just extremely difficult, borderline impossible to hit notes that are in key. But that's actually cool, and it can be good practice for guitar players especially to try to play like that. It is absolutely possible to play melodically and to play phrases with an instrument that is just pure hertz. Uh, and I'm going to prove it to you in a second. But the other reason this is cool is that you can also take this little dinky oscillator sound and run it into other effects pedals. So in this example, I'm running it into a mute switch from Saturn Works. This is just a thing that will let me momentarily mute and unmute the signal while I'm playing. Then it's also going into a microcosm, which is turned off now, but I'm going to turn it on halfway through. And then it's also going in the Strymon Deco just to make things sound good. last pro tip is something I got from Prince. He has a song called Rainbow Children, and there's a guitar solo on it. And I'm pretty sure what he's doing there is that he took a ring modulator, and then he hooked it up to work with an expression pedal, and he was using the expression pedal to control the mix of the ring mod. So basically, uh, he could play and then step on the expression pedal to blend the ring modulation in and out while he was playing. So the reason this is cool is that you can finally set the ring modulator to be really aggressive and like out of control, but then you can control it while you're playing by blending it in and out, mixing it in and out with an expression pedal. Uh, and the advanced way to do this actually is to start to think in terms of the sound of ring mod. To, to sort of start to internalize what it sounds like at its most extreme and then start to play phrases with that in mind. It's like you could start a sentence with your normal tone and then finish the sentence with the ring mod. In the example you're about to hear where I'm trying to do that, uh, I should say that I'm also using the Bit Commander from Earthquaker Devices as my basic starting point. 
And then the other thing I got to say is that uh, what you're about to hear is actually something I recorded for an old band I was in, so I don't have video of it. So instead, I'm going to be showing you maps I made in high school for my Dungeons & Dragons game. 